everybody, I'm Zoe FPV and welcome to a very special episode of Rotorai. Today we're here at the Outcast Drone Works Lab at Hess Systems and we've got two of my favorite things. You may know me for my 3D flying. So 3D is the ability for the drone to reverse the thrust. So generally the thrust is going downwards. The motor will stop mid-air and actually reverse thrust in the opposite direction. You may know me from my X-Class rigs. X-Class is a community-based uh, organization that's really focused on driving drone racing forward. We like big drones. But today we're doing something you've all wanted. We're combining the two and we're gonna do 3D X-Class for the very first time to show you if this is even freaking possible. several people to help us get this done as quickly as possible. So we're going to build out the arms first, put the motors on the arms, get everything ready. Once we have the arms together, we will attach them to the main frame of the machine and from there slaughter everything else together. So these were prototype gem fan props, so they're now in production, but these are actually from the original prototype batch. There's a big difference. The regular props I use are the master air screws. These are the original 13-inch X-Class prop. It has a near a symmetrical airfoil, which makes it great for 3D, whereas the gem fan props here have an airfoil that's more suited for regular racing flight. These ones that we're using on the other rig are lighter, these are heavier. And the more mass you have, the slower it's going to be to spin and the more stress it's going to put on the motor and ESC. So we might not have as much thrust with the other propellers, but should strain the machine less when we do spin it up and spin it back down with 3D mode. We are currently strapping this beast down to the table so we can do some 3D prop tests to make sure that the motors can actually handle the propellers in 3D mode before we go out and fly. My big concern is that we're going to have desync issues as where the motor will quickly stutter for a second in the transitions, which would cause it to flail out of the sky if we were flying. Yeah, my concern is the exploding props you talked about, so I think we need safety gear. Put these on, you'll be just as safe as I am. <laughs> yeah, you'll be good. Deal with it. so crazy. And that is a proper test of these motors. They're cool to the touch, which means I think we've got ourselves a 3D flying X class wow, those rig. Are not, those are not toasty at all. The one thing I will say, there is a delay. So I was going full stick back and forth, and it was like taking its time to go from one to the other, which is probably for the best, meaning it's not going to try to force the motor to go faster than it can actually spin. And hopefully, it will mean in the field this will not fail midair. So uh, are we clear for takeoff? Over. I think we're clear for takeoff. Well, let's get out to the flank. I have never flown X Class in 3D. And I don't know how the machine's gonna react. We don't even have proper 3D props, but that's kind of how I started out. Back when I got into 3D, we didn't have machinery for it. It's kind of like relearning how to fly 3D all over again a little bit. Uh, it's a little loose. Yeah, this is like a very tame setup. It looks really locked in. You said the tune needed work? It looks amazing to me. So, 3D X class, never done before, right? Never done before. Ever. Like, I want to I wanted do a roll. Ah! Was that it? That was a roll. Does not like rolling. So tune is definitely a little bit off. Do you want to fix it? Land it. We can tune it. That's a good landing. Yeah. I think we need to tilt to the side. Let's try doubling up the P. Wait, why would you want to raise it, though? it's very loose. Yeah, so when she did her roll, the it, it kind of went as it was trying to settle down. But why why would you have so much higher P's on this larger drone than a, um, than a smaller the motors. drone? The response is a lot slower with the motors, so you need more P to kind of compensate for that. Okay. Before I do a flip, I'm going to try to do some hard turns to see if it can hold it, because I noticed that when I did a hard left, ended up just kind of like wobbling out a little bit. Rates feel good, like it was doing the roll quickly, but it was just coming out of the roll like whoa, 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 whoa. The mood is just so different right now. 
Because we're dealing like, with a serious machine. Because no, like normally when we go off flat, we're just like, ah, 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 we're running right now, let's fly the quads. And now we're just like, okay. This right. is some serious business right here. <laughs> oh god. How's it feel? Worse. Worse? Yeah. We'll bring it back. So you think we went too high on P? Oh god. What's it doing? It's just it's just very wobbly. Wobble interesting. Oh, oh wow, yeah, that looks like that's a P shake right there. Well it was fine before. Oh, I can hear it. Yeah, get it down. So the P term in the tune, that's what defines how uh, responsive the drone is to error, whether that error is from external movement or input from your sticks. Um, you want the P to be high enough that you get good response, but not so high that it overshoots and then has to compensate for error in the other way, and you get that wobble. Yeah, lower P's by about 50, well, in between where they originally were and where they are now, so okay. it's like 70 versus 100. It's so like one I ever a yaw, it like freaks out. Oh god. Yeah, every time I let off the yaw, it kind of like dips down. This is kind of terrifying. I mean, it feels good when you keep on the throttle, but as soon as you let go of it, I'm gonna try to roll real quick. That wasn't too bad. Better. That was passable. I mean, if I stay on the throttle, it's good. I guess the real question is where it is, would you feel confident 3Ding it? <sighs> I'm feeling pretty confident. I think I'm gonna send it. I am nervous, but let's well, do this. We're in a very remote area. We've done all the safety checks we could possibly do. Mm -hmm. We've mitigated risk to the full extent. So at this point, you know, the only thing you're risking is the drone. You're gonna you're gonna fly away from us. You know, it just comes down to when you're when you're ready to, to go upside down, and you have to be at your comfort level, right? Yeah. So I mean, if you want to take some more practice laps, no. This is all about risk mitigation. No, I'm gonna put it in 3D mode. Uh, fly it around a little bit in 3D mode, see if it feels good, just a regular flight. And then, once I line up a good line to where I feel comfortable going inverted, I'm just going to go inverted and see how this thing does. So let's do this. 3D mode engaged. So far, so good. I will say, I felt like I was almost losing altitude. It, it, they didn't even speed up. The motors didn't even get to speed. I think you gotta remember that the... Oh, that was smooth. I think you gotta remember that the motors are gonna take so much longer to spool up. You gotta give them time to get there because we didn't, it's not like it made a noise even, you know? Oh. Ah! What happened? Uh, the motor's spool time was a little bit low. I was trying to do something cool over the trees. I think it's in one piece though. The spool rates with the motors are very slow. You have to be very aware of them. I was trying to go in for this, oh, I know it. And then I realized, oh, I have like no thrust inverted. Like I've got to go full stick negative just to get a little bit of thrust out of it. So I have to be very aware of the machine when I'm doing things. That could have gotten better, but now I'm itching for X-Class 3D. Now that I know the motors can handle it, the hardware can handle it, I want X-Class 3D to become a thing. I did not think the hardware is even going to be capable of doing 3D to the point that it has. And so now we're taking the props off my handy dandy rig. These ones are more symmetrical, and we're going to put them on the other rig, which should give us more inverted thrust and allow this to potentially fly upside down even better than it is right now. I wish we had more time to tune it with the, the, the daylight we've got today. Um, but like when it went inverted, it was it was smooth, it was seamless. Um, so I think uh, with a little bit more uh, planning on where the inversion is happening, I think it's gonna be good. How's it feeling, Zill? Pretty good. Not still different. Oh yeah. Oh, she just went for it. Has way more thrust inverted. Oh god. Oh, oh, That's oh, tuning. Oh, oh, oh. That was scary. That was that was that, that, that was a that was a little scary wobble we had. It was just 
was not happy with it. As soon as I went inverted and tried to give it a lot of throttle, it was just having a hard time trying to catch itself and because of that, it kind of wobbled out of the sky. It's like doing the thing tiny whoops do, so that they get into this shake and then it'll stop until they hit the ground and bounce back up. Yeah. So I think it's kind of like the same theory. It's kind of, I mean, it's cool. It definitely can do 3D. With the other props, it has way more thrust but it doesn't have the tune, I think, to actually be able to handle what we're trying to do with it right now. Oh wow. Didn't just break the arm, it actually broke the top plate. The top, pl okay. top plate, bottom plate, and a pad off an ESC. Dude. So how much is the frame? 180 or So the frame's 180 bucks, and I'd call it pretty well totaled. How much is the ESC? Ah, uh, yes, he's like four, yeah. Four okay, bucks. so now we're 200 bucks. All in all said, that still was a so pretty gentle two, crash. 200 bucks. Yeah, it was a very gentle crash. It's a $200 crash. This is one of the first builds on this frame ever. Yeah. Clearly it needs some improvement. It needs some improvement. It's very, there's a lot of clever things about this design, but no. it didn't, didn't hold up. Did not hold up. So that happened. We actually got it to 3D for a little bit. We did a couple little things. Obviously not super impressive and obviously... We sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, it's very impressive. You should be, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, you I'm did something proud. that hasn't been done before. Like, you can't She's like so downplaying it. I mean... Well, okay, so the thing is, like, this feels like the first 3D rig I ever put together, which uh, had very similar results. We didn't have proper equipment for it, and at the time, I didn't know what proper equipment was. And that started me down a lifelong journey. It took years before a proper 5-inch quad was flying to the ability and able to do TikToks and all the maneuvers that I currently do. Yeah, so the first time you went and flew 3D, did you do TikToks? Did no. you do any of that stuff? It wasn't possible. I did basically what we did today. <laughs> and the new gear and the advancements only came because people like you pushed it. Yeah. So and this, is, this is your new white whale, yeah? This is my new white whale. It might take me a couple years, but I'm going to make this work because I see some applications for giant 3D drones, not just for freestyle, but I want to see happen in this world. And quite honestly, I like pushing the boundaries of technology. This is another boundary for me to push. And I'm excited to go along this journey to figure out how it's going to work and what I can do to make it happen. There's just straight up no one else crazy enough to <laughs> want to do this. <laughs> so so guys, could do it too. If you guys love seeing Zoe push things like this, hit that like button. Show her some love. Show her some support because this is awesome. No one else is trying things like this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Aww, you're killing guys. it. I'm, you're killing it. Yeah. Keep killing it. We'll see you next time, guys. <laughs>